Welcome, church family. My name is Tim Williams, and this is The Invite, a Williams Boulevard Baptist Church podcast exploring what it means to follow Jesus today. You know, when Jesus began his earthly ministry, that's what he was doing. He started by inviting people to follow him. Andrew, Peter, James, and John were hanging out at the Sea of Galilee. They were fishermen, and Jesus came by and said to them, Come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And the story says that they left everything, they left their nets, and they followed Jesus. We want to explore what it is to follow Jesus today. For the next six weeks leading up to Easter, uh, we're going to be gathering in groups. We're calling them our parable groups. Um, We're gathering together at at our workplace and coffee shop, at the church, um, in our neighborhood, wherever is convenient. And we're going to be studying the parables of Luke as we learn more about what it means um, to follow Jesus today. Uh, We'd like to invite you to be a part of that process. Uh, We've got a resource to help you with that. Uh, You can pick it up at church on Sunday, or you can download it from our website, williamsblvd.org. But we would love for you to join us on this journey as we learn um, to follow Jesus each and every day. You know, the parables of Jesus are life stories, and they have a key idea, and they ultimately lead us to a so what point. So what does this mean for me? How does this change my life? What should I do about it? In Luke chapter 10, we find one of the most well-known parables, um, the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's so common that we actually use that phrase, the Good Samaritan, in everyday language. Uh, When someone stops to help somebody in need, we say he or she was a Good Samaritan. There are also laws that are designed to help people who, who stop and help someone in need. We call them the Good Samaritan laws. When I lived up in Canada, I used to travel to the far north, um, the Yukon, the Northwest Territories. And when we would travel up there, I found out that it was a law that you had to stop and help someone. If you came upon an accident or someone in need, you were required by law to stop and help them. And the Good Samaritan laws protected you um, from the liability of stopping to help them. But that was the gist of the parable. The question then becomes, what does that parable mean for us? How do we apply that to our life every day? In Luke chapter 10, when he begins this parable, he doesn't start out by telling a story. It's actually um, brought on by a question. Um, There was a lawyer who asked Jesus, leave it up to the lawyer um, to ask the question. But the lawyer asked, what must I do to have eternal life? So Jesus flipped it back on him. He asked him, what does the law say? And the man responded, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered correctly. You're right. You're spot on. But the lawyer wasn't satisfied because he wanted to justify himself. And so he asked Jesus, but who is my neighbor? And that's when Jesus told the parable. He said there was a man going from Jerusalem down to Jericho. It's about a seven-mile journey through some pretty rugged terrain, a perfect place to rob someone. And as he went on that journey, there were robbers who came upon him, and they robbed him, they beat him, and stripped him, left him on the side of the road half dead. Shortly thereafter, a priest happened to pass by that way, and he saw the man, but he kept on going. A little while later, a Levite or a teacher also happened along that way. But he too, after seeing the man, continued on his journey. Finally, a third man passed by and he was the Samaritan. And the Samaritan saw the man on the side of the road. And as Jesus tells the story, he had compassion on him and he stopped. He stopped and he bandaged his wounds. He put him on his own donkey and he took him to a nearby inn where he told the innkeeper, take care of this man. And if anything else is required, when I come back this way, I'll pay whatever is necessary for you to take care of this man. At the end of the parable, Jesus turned and asked the lawyer, he said, which of these was the neighbor to the man who had been robbed? The pivotal point in this parable is when he stopped. Um, The pivotal point in the story is when the Samaritan stopped. You see, that's when everything changed. The Levite came by and he didn't stop. The priest came by and he didn't stop. 
but the Samaritan came by and he stopped. And Jesus specifically said he stopped because he had compassion. I wonder how often we stop. When's the last time you stopped? As a follower of Jesus Christ, when's the last time you stopped and helped someone in need? What are some reasons maybe that we don't stop? I'm thinking about the priest and Levite. If I were to interview them and ask them, why didn't you stop? Maybe there was fear. Um, I might get robbed. I've got to keep moving. Maybe it was just an inconvenience. You know, sometimes we don't stop because we've got places to go and people to meet and we don't have time um, to do other things. Or maybe it's just apathy. Uh, We don't care. Uh, Why should I get involved? I don't really want to be involved in someone else's problem. But it also tells us why the Samaritan stopped, um, because he had the compassion of Christ. You know, oftentimes uh, we think we stop quite often, um, but the reality is most of the time we stop for friends and family. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about people in need, unexpected situations, opportunities that Jesus puts in our path to be salt and light, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. How often do we stop and minister someone because of Christ? You know, they asked Jesus a question, when did I see you hungry and feed you? When did I see you thirsty and give you a drink? When were you sick or in prison and we visited you? And Jesus responded in Matthew 25, whenever you've done to the least of these, my brothers, you've done also to me. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. God, I pray today that you would help us on this journey as we follow you, um, just to learn to stop and listen and see. Stop and be a part of what you're doing. Help us to see what you see. Help us to be filled with the compassion of Christ and recognize those opportunities you put in front of us every day. Help us not only to follow you, but to be your disciples in how we live, how we act, and how we respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for stopping and listening today. I hope the Holy Spirit has given you a new perspective on the parable. Hope maybe the Holy Spirit has helped you to see how it impacts you following Jesus today. If this was helpful in any way, we'd love for you to click like and subscribe. Um, Subscribe to our Williams Boulevard Baptist Church channel. And we're going to be doing this every Wednesday. And so join in as we talk every Wednesday about what it means to follow Jesus today. Thanks for listening.